We respectfully request the Sangha Great Virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma will to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Tung thin dai du hức tặng thin vi thứ pháp hội cập nhật thi hiếp chúng sanh tịnh chiến diệu pháp luân giao đạo ngã mùng như há liều sanh thoát tư ly khổ đà là tốt chứng vô sanh How much of the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one? Namo Sarantu Sucero Ye La Hodi San Mio San Puto Sye Nam mô Đại Đức Tha Tu Gia Đại Gia La Hà Đế Tam Biểu Tam Bồ Đà Tọa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Wu shang sheng sheng wei miao fa ba hi chen wan jie nan zao yu wo jin jie wen de shou chu yuan jie ru lai zhe shi yi O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Ching Liang Rei Master Shen Hua, all good monks and nuns, and all good no advisors are me to for. Chi Phật Bồ Tát kính thưa Thanh Lương Đại Sư Thượng Thiên Hóa, Quý Thầy Cô và Quý Vị Thịnh Sư Tất Cả Yêu Đạo Phật. Chú Phổ Bồ Tát, Ching Liang Ta Sư, Sư Phụ Sang Ren, Gơ Vệ Chú Chá Ren, Gơ Vệ Sang Chú Sư, Mì Tô Phổ. Hello everyone, today is the 19th of March. Oh, wow, the month went by so fast. Uh, uh, 2023, we're here in Wei Mountain Temple to continue discussing the uh, first chapter of the Avatamsaka Sutra. Uh, I'll be traveling for some time, so uh, I will be the last lecture on this uh, chapter here for a while, uh, for a few weeks at least. And uh, after this chapter, I made up my mind already. Time is running short. I don't have a whole lot of time left. So let's discuss. Uh, next chapter will be the four, the four major chapters in this sutra, the uh, chapters on faith, the 10 faiths, the 10 dwellings, the 10 uh, the ten, um, the ten conducts, and the ten transferences, and then we'll be discussing chapter uh, thirty-nine for sure, chapter forty for sure, and the other chapters. I don't know. I don't. We don't. Uh, don't have a whole lot of time. You guys are slow learners. I sometimes spend two hours on one slide. Uh, it's not good for you. <laughs> Okay, he's too slow. <laughs> anyway, mm. all right. Sounds good. Any objections? Okay, good. Okay, we're now on slide uh, uh, eighty-six. Uh, 
talking about these big shots, big weeks who were in attendance. It's got to be important to, for your name to be mentioned. You know, it's kind of cool. And, uh, and that kind of tells you how deceptive the Buddhists are. These are big shots and they manifest themselves as a king of the fourth Dhyana heaven or, you know, which are really low lives. Okay, and so the Maya Sattvas, they go to work in our world, pretending to be a peon, a nobody. Only the idiots who have big titles. I can think of one. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay, so 86. Now, thus come one's voice transcends bounds and impediments. No one is ready to be taught, will fail. Uh, no one who is ready to be taught will fail to hear it. Okay, so the Buddha's voice is boundless, meaning that it can go anywhere, all throughout the Dharma realm, throughout the universe, okay, so everywhere, and cannot be obstructed, meaning that there's no force known in this, in this, in this world, in this universe, that can obstruct the voice of the Buddha, meaning that wherever he wants his voice to reach, whoever is ready to be taught anywhere in the universe, Shakmana Buddha, for example, doesn't need to fly there. He can simply sit here and speak to anyone all over the universe. Isn't that cool? You guys have to drive from San Diego. <laughs> Because only because I can't speak to you from here to San Diego. Buddhas are much cooler. They say, hey, those guys are ready. Let's teach them. <laughs> okay? Uh, and what is the condition? Uh, this is one thing you have to remember. Buddhas also have limitation. The only limitation is you. It's not the Buddhas. You got it? Meaning that you cannot be taught unless you have blessings that are maturing. And this is our limitation. There's nothing we can do about it. You can be all well-meaning. Take, for example, a doctor is very competent, he's, who's, uh, who can cure anything. But if you're not willing to take the medicine, you know, the doctor gives you, here, this is medicine will, will cure you. But you take the medicine and throw it out. What are you going to do? What, what can a doctor do? They can't force you to take the medicine, okay? Same thing with the Buddha. The Buddha, when, they speak, when he speaks Dharma, is to help you solve your problems. But you don't believe him. There's nothing he can do, okay? So unless your blessings mature, that's what the Buddhists mean by conditions are ripened, okay? Uh, uh, show what? They can, they ripen, uh, can show hua, meaning they are, they, are, they are willing to receive, willing to be transformed. The Chinese is very precise. It's not to be taught, ready to be taught. Actually, can uh, here, can here, can la can, can la can. Is it can or can? Can, oh, Kandran, Kandran, okay, Kandran, like the, the Shao world, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, Chinese people. It's my inadequacies. Kan, Kan Shou Hua. The people who are capable of receiving, capable of being transformed, so what is, how are you capable of being transformed? Is because you have the blessings. Is it clear? Who, are, who can be transformed, not ready to be taught. Who can be transformed, change it. Okay, because, because the way it's translated, uh, it it's, uh, destroys the, 
the meaning of Mahayana. Is they're not ready. You may be transformed, you can, you can be transformed, but you're not ready. You say, oh, can I go have some gelato first? You're ready, okay? But you, uh, you, you can be transformed, okay? But, uh, but you don't want to. You say, uh, what's the hurry? Hey, life is short. Let me enjoy life first. I can become Buddha later. Didn't you say that I will become a Buddha in the future for sure? Okay? So far, so good? Okay. So when we are ready to be transformed, to be taught, uh, to teach is to transform, by the way. The teachings are designed to transform you. What is to transform? Transform to make something that's not there appear. Like magic. Which is like a flower. Huh? It's not there. And all of a sudden it appears like magic. So the same thing. Your quint the quintessential you is there, waiting to, be, waiting to come out on your mediocre one that you are right now. Any problems with that? Hmm? Okay. Uh, so, uh, so if you're ready to be transformed when you are, you can be transformed, uh, then uh, the Buddha can speak the Dharma to you and the Dharma will transform you. Isn't that cool? That's how it works in Buddhism. That's why we speak Dharma so much. We spend hours upon hours. I spend hours like at least, I don't know, I the last count, like 12 hours a week speaking Dharma. The pastor spends 45 minutes each Sunday. <laughs> okay, this is not counting on the private counseling and, and uh, the hand-holding. 88. And yet the Buddha remains still, forever unmoving. This is the God delightful knowledge, liberation. So the Buddha speaks Dharma. Speaking Dharma to transform you is representative of what Buddhas do. Buddhas do everything to cross us over from the sea of suffering to the other shore of nirvana. Okay? Uh, uh, and, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of different activities, uh, online activities, uh, 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 telephone work, uh, <laughs> and so forth. Okay? Uh, so, but he remains still and unmoving. Okay, that's spiritual powers, by the way. This is what it means. It means still he enters samadhi, and in the midst of samadhi, he sends his transformation bodies everywhere, okay, to teach, or just simply sit there and speak to, you know, a little lady here. Huh? Okay, also from San Diego. Okay, so far so good? Okay, so Buddhas are cool. I don't know about you, but a little bit slightly cooler than 007. We call it 006. <laughs> huh? You like? Huh? I'm fascinated by 00s. <laughs> okay, this is the God, delightful knowledge liberation. Mm -hmm. Delightful knowledge. Ah. Uh, uh, delightful. Uh, he's liberated. And yet, this liberation here, this enlightenment here, is so delightful. Liberation is fun. Enlightenment is fun, folks. Contrary to proper, proper belief. People said, I'm enlightened. So what is going to happen to my wife, happen to my children, you know, my grandparents? Uh, they're still there. 
but you have more delight in their companies. Husbands too included. <laughs> okay? Uh, so, uh, so, this kind of wisdom for his particular person here, he, he takes delight in that kind of wisdom. This true here, okay? True here is, is, is kind of a cool thing. Uh, this is kind of wisdom, the knowledge here, but a special kind, a special kind of wisdom but stands centered upon knowledge, okay? Wisdom is like uh, you, uh, so many things that wisdom refers to, but this two here refers to particular knowledge, okay? Wisdom concerning knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Knowledge about worlds. All the worlds out there in the universe, they know about it. Impure world, pure worlds, world to the east, world to the west. Okay? All over. He knows. Every single world out there. Can you imagine a world is like 3,000, 3 great thousand small world. There's so many things. Our galaxy is like one world. Okay? And the universe has boundless galaxies, and the Buddhas, this particular guy here, this particular God here, he knows about those worlds. So he, that's why he's, he's a real big shot. He knows so much, okay, of those worlds. And then, not only does he know worlds, he also knows about the phenomena. He says, a bridge, wow. I know how to build a bridge. How about drywall construction? I know how to build new drywalls. Do you? No true yet, no knowledge yet. You see that? So it's amazing on how this God here, he knows so much, okay? So many skills, so many specialties. Hmm? Nuclear engineering, mathematics, medicine. He has tons, tons of knowledge. What's B? It refers to, it's not just material things. What he knows, very important to him, is people, living beings. He said he knows how Koreans should be transformed. They're slightly different than the Vietnamese or the pale faced people. You see? So the pin here is not just ethnicities, it's about pin here is pin meaning that actually, if you look at from an from a aggregate viewpoint, it's actually samadhis. It's samadhi. Doesn't matter whoever you are, what kind of ethnicity, what kind of gender, whether you have hair or not, okay? You belong to a certain samadhi level. So at that samadhi level, okay, he knows what it takes to transform you. JC. Okay, forget JC. Koreans, for some reason, are very slow. It's very early in the morning for them right now. Like 6 or 7 on Monday morning. And they're thinking of going to work instead of us. Okay. What? What did I say? YouTube에 올라온 김하준님 질문입니다. 아미타불 스승님, 정토법은 구정 이상에서만 이해가 가능한 것인가요? 아미토포 마스터, I have a question about pure land dharma. 
Is it only possible to understand Pure Land Dharma when you are ninth Samadhi? Who's asking? Is this a Korean person? I don't know any Korean person who's nine Samadhi, so I'm not going to answer that. Yes. You, I will answer you because it's useful to you. I'm, I don't, I'm not interested in answering you to show you how much I know. Okay, you have to ask the old monk for that. I don't do that. The old monk knows everything. You should ask him. Okay? Uh, yeah, you have to be pretty high up there to for really for really for you to be to begin to understand the Pure Land Dharma because um, because um, for the reason that I've seen uh, my master's disciples and I, I understand why they don't understand the Pure Land Dharma door. Okay, not high enough. So yes, in that sense, yes, I'm willing to tell you that you need to be high enough to be able to really. Uh, comprehend the uh, Pure Land Amador. All right. Mm. And then, uh, uh, so also he, his knowledge uh, pertains to what happened in the past, the present, and the future as well. He gonna, he, he, you ask him, he says, autonomous driving, impossible. Yes, sir. <laughs> Don't believe Elon. Elon is a scam artist. Master, artificial intelligence is catching up, and within the next ten years or so, we're gonna—they're gonna be smarter than humans. Who? Chimpanzees? The artificial intelligence. Impossible. Never. I, I agree with you, but that's not what people say. That's what I, I'd, I'd say. Like. Let me put it this way. You're Mexican, right? Yeah, no, okay, I'm, okay. I'm American. I'm okay. American. <laughs> Nothing, no, no offense intended. Okay? Mexican will always excel at making tacos. <laughs> see, see, Master, that's, that's why I'm not Mexican. I'm American. I'm not very good at making tacos. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's in the genes. You, 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 you're confused by appearance. I'm looking at genes only. <laughs> the Vietnamese, what they're good at? Let me see. Mm, making war. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Americans? What are they good at, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Two. Two, number two. Thank you, Master. Americans are good at making debt. Making debt? <laughs> <laughs> debt. Debt. Owing money. Debts. <laughs> He's Republican. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, there's some truth in there. What about Koreans? What are they good at? Lily, you seen, you lived your, almost your entire life now. What are Koreans good at? Okay, he said, why do you keep on calling me? This is the second time today. <laughs> Baby, did you say? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Young of Koreans don't make babies anymore, I'm oh, told. <laughs> Sir, Master Koreans... We could do everything except people, oh, sorry. Except people cannot do, we do everything. We do everything. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so Korean. <laughs> That's why the Koreans say, I only need to be Korean. I don't need no one else. No Americans, no Chinese, no Japanese. <laughs> Okay, so how did we get into this ethnicity thing here? It's so racist. <laughs> okay, so anyone else would like to proclaim their national, national uh, uh, expertise? <laughs> okay, so at all times, from the past, the present, and the future. Okay, and that kind of knowledge uh, 
uh, is uh, is uh, can be taught uh, without impediments. That's what interesting about this is that the knowledge they have, they know how to pass it on to you. What's knowledge if he dies with you? That's what happened to Xu Yun. His wisdom dies with him. His, his disciples, too low. You know that? Xu Yun's level is eighth round. And after he died, his disciples, I can't think of anyone. I don't know them all, but you know, I can't think of anyone who reached that level. Anyone? Yes, sir. Uh, I was just say uh, knowledge after you die is karma. Yeah, different reasons, but it's because Master Yun, Master Yun, uh, knowledge, wisdom, does not include how to pass on to the next generation. Master Shenhua, for example, Gu Yin's uh, teacher, the one who's sleeping back there. See, yeah, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> she also here by body only, but the heart is in San Francisco. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, they 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 don't they don't um, you know they they don't quite know how to pass it on. Master Shi you know, his level he can pass on his knowledge, his wisdom. Yes, sir. Two. Thank you, Master. I'm so glad you bring up. Uh, you asked the question, "What is knowledge?" If you don't share it with anybody after you die. Oh, that's a good uh, Dharma glimpse. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I'm currently consulting for a company. It's very interesting. Uh, they're hyper-focused on documenting, even to the extent where they document before they even try something out. And mm. the motivation for that is because everyone's only on a 12-month contract. So, well... They need to write it down so the people who they get replaced by have something to read <laughs> and know what's going on. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, but it's more than that, more than documentation. It's just that you know what's important that needs to be transmitted to the next generation. You know, because knowledge is like so widespread. If you document everything, it's not enough time. We, don't, we can't read everything. Okay? It's impossible. So that knowledge to transmit, the most important one is the critical information I need to be passed down. Yes, too. Thank you, Master. And yes, uh, thank you so much for the, using that vocabulary because in addition to understanding transformation, uh, a really important concept for me to have learned and to have received since I've started is the concept of transmission. Yes, yes. And not only that, but I feel that the Buddhists, I feel this is what I fault the Buddhist teachers in general. They don't emphasize enough that uh, the need for us to transfer the knowledge to you. If you receive the knowledge, uh, and you cultivate accordingly, you be transformed. You become a, become a better person. Transformation to me is become a better, a better version of yourself. Better Korean, better American. So when the Koreans could claim that they know it can, they can do everything, we Americans don't. But we get transformed, we do better than they do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but but uh, don't worry, I also have branch temples in Korea. <laughs> okay, not funny, not funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next, 90. The Lord, humans and gods, one of still and quiet liberation, appears everywhere throughout the ten directions. Okay, this Buddha, Buddhas are the rulers of the humans and the gods. 
Buddhist wisdom, our world is ruled by humans. And then the gods rule over the humans. This Buddhist wisdom. Okay, that's why initially the Asian, like a Chinese, a Koreans, and Vietnamese, they call themselves like the, the descendants of the heavens. That's, that's the, the wisdom there. Uh, here in the West, so we call ourselves a uh, founder of uh, the world and so forth because we don't know better. The fact is that we are in the jurisdiction of the gods, us. Okay? Humans are under the, uh, the, um, the control of the, of the gods. So it's not uncommon for the gods to send down thunder to punish living beings. Yes. Well, I'm trying to figure out what ooh, what the, the cross thing means. Uh, oh, Master, it's a band. It's a Christ band? Christian band, actually. Christian what? Christian band. Christian band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rock band. Yeah, yeah. Many, many hats. Uh, it's hard to keep up with you. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, does the, so the gods are in charge of the humans, but then the Buddha is in charge of the gods, right? Yeah. He is in charge of the gods. Uh, uh, the, uh, he, the Buddhas rule over the gods. Okay? One of still and quiet liberation, his liberation is, enables him to be still and in, enjoy the quietude, meaning that in the midst of chaos, he can be still and can be totally unmoving, not emotional at all. This morning I was angry about emotional people. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Mm. Appears uh, the uh, English translation is, is uh, uh, took out the emphasis. It says in Chinese, there's nowhere that he won't appear. Okay. Meaning what? If you're a buck in a toilet, and you're ready to be transformed. Guess what he'll do? He'll send a Korean person to go transform that. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. God. <laughs> the Koreans are not even laughing. <laughs> oh, it's Lily who set them up. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Go for us. <laughs> Hello, Master. Uh, this is a, a bit of a technical question, um, and then it's relevant uh, in the context of translation, too. Uh, so when we talk about um, gods here, uh, are those just regular sort of citizens of heaven, like heavenly beings? They can all be referred as gods? Or those are just the, or those are only the the ones in charge in the heaven in the heavens. Which uh, gods are we talking about? The people uh, in the heavens? Like here, the Tianren is translated as God. So heavenly being, like yeah, Mary heavenly beings. Earth. Yeah, heavenly uh, beings. Uh, so here, sometimes I see this in other places, like heavenly beings and the gods are. Yeah, it includes goddesses as well. So you can say every, but every being in the heaven is a god? All the heavenly dwellers, yes. Heavenly beings, yes. Okay, thank you. Not just gods. Okay, not just uh, 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 Daniel's, uh, Carrasco's uh, boss. Okay, uh, and just by the way, are they gods of, like, in charge of something? Like, they're actually god of tree, god of certain things, every, everybody there? No, 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 that's my kissing up to those uh, people who've been doing me favors. They're actually spirits. 
Okay, yes, I call them the goddess of rain. Please stop, don't rain Tuesday in San Francisco. <laughs> I'm kissing up to those beings. Okay, I, I think in the translation context, it's probably still better to translate that into Tianren, not, not Shen, right? Because God. Yeah, Shen is spirit. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh. You're welcome. JC. YouTube, 아미타 부처님의 명호를 외워도 괜찮을까요? 이상입니다. This question is Kim Hwa Jun from YouTube. Amitofo Master, I have a question about silent recitation. I'm not really good at it, but I try to focus and recite into my belly button. And I notice myself, I start to crunch my teeth. So I have a question about that, if that's okay. And also, my job is cleaning apartment. When I clean stairs or floor, can I still recite? Thank you. Cleaning apartments? Yes. Sure, you can recite anywhere, silently. OK? Uh, uh, and the first question is, grinding uh, the teeth? Oh, I need to call my dentist first. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What about it? You, you recite and you grind your teeth? <laughs> Master, so actually more like he's biting his teeth? Biting his teeth. Stop it. Is there a question? Don't bite your teeth. Treat your teeth gently. Yes, too. Thank you, Master. For the Hankook Sarang, um, Master, you provided some instruction to me early on that helped me stop clenching and grinding my teeth when I meditated. What did I do? I listened <laughs> to my own advice. <laughs> my dentist had to give me the, the, the tooth guard at night. He said, how do you wear this? I said, well, I, I wear a bite guard at night, for sure. But you do? I, yeah. But for during meditation, um, you, you suggested that you rest your tongue uh, behind your two front teeth. Okay. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and you, you suggested that, you know, you, 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 you wipe your tongue around your front teeth to remove the saliva, and then you rest your tongue behind your two front teeth to kind of like rest your jaw. And that helped me to stop grinding my teeth. Oh, try that. It didn't work for me. <laughs> I'm glad it worked for you. Uh, OK. Um, did, we, did I answer those two questions? I think so, huh? Yes, thank you. OK, you're welcome. OK. Uh, it, the emphasis on the second verse is, is that is as it's nowhere he will refuse to go. You know what? He won't go. No, he, to say appears everywhere is so casual. He says, I'm willing to go anywhere. Myself. Is that clear? If he needs to go somewhere to help someone, he'll go. No hesitation. Yes, too. Oh, thank you, Master. I was curious, uh, with, with Buddhas, do they sort of follow a hierarchy where they'll answer to the needs of bodhisattvas first, and the bodhisattvas would answer to the needs of lower living beings? Or do Buddhas go to the lower living beings for some reason, or do they need to? Because I, I figure there's helpers in all different... You're areas. asking about Buddhas to me? Oh, sorry. <laughs> 
This is this a trick question? <laughs> She shouldn't answer that. <laughs> See what I mean? I rest my case. She, she gave me a dirty look immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but I can, I can, I can uh, make an educated guess. Um, you have a hierarchy. There's the Buddhas and Mahasattvas and Bodhisattvas and, and so forth, yeah, lower, lower down. Okay. Why, is this, why is there such a hierarchy? Okay. Uh, because that way, everyone benefits from the work, from the opportunities. So, uh, so, do Buddhas really need Bodhisattva's help? No, not at all. Then why, why would they teach Bodhisattvas? They teach Bodhisattvas and train Bodhisattvas so that Bodhisattvas have a chance to create blessings so that they can become Buddhas down the road. If Buddhas get to do everything, then uh, Buddhas, uh, Bodhisattvas will never become Buddhas. So for example, let's say that you have a Bodhisattva in charge of the G.I. Joes. Okay, he's a person who says, I swear to God, I will save all the G.I.s in the world. Vietnamese GI, Thai GIs, you name it, okay? You are GI Joe, I will save you. Interested anyone? You might have to go to Ukraine right now. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm coming to you for, okay? Uh, so, so, so you have a, a Bodhisattva in charge of saving the, the, the soldiers. Okay, but so Buddha say, okay, I have a, this soldier need to be saved here, Bodhisattva, soldier Bodhisattva, you go do it. Okay, however, at times the problem is bigger, much more difficult than the Bodhisattva can handle. That's when Buddha's helps. Does it does it make sense to you? Just because the Bodhisattva is supposed to do it, Buddha says, no, you can't, and that's more important to save this person right now. Okay, so I teach you how to save this person. All right, that's how it works. Yes, four in the back. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and ask a question from Catholic Daniel. He wants to know, in Buddhism, who rules the Buddhas? Christian God. He hopes, <laughs> he believes. <laughs> Daniel believes, I'm only speaking in the language Daniel, only Daniel understands. Uh, he, so the Christian God rules over the Buddhists on earth. You laughing? It's true. Remember, the humans are under the jurisdiction of the gods, yes? You think a chakra only is interested in ruling over the, his Catholics? He also needs to take care of non-Catholics as well. This is what the Catholic, Catholics don't tell themselves. That's all. The Christian God is actually a very good dude. He cares for everyone, not just the Catholics. Yes, five. The Muslim God. Muslim God? Is he, I mean, because Same thing. It's the same God. Okay. Yeah, it is the same God. But they like to call Allah. And Daniel said, Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> okay. It's the same God. It's okay. What's by and what's a rose in a different name? It still smells the same. <laughs> Yes, five. However, there are different perceptions about 
who follows which name or either Jesus, either Allah or whatever. So the perceptions and behaviors of the followers are different to the ones. <laughs> honey, honey, Jesus is not Allah. No, it's not. <laughs> Jesus is the son of God. It's not God. God is Allah. Allah is God. But Jesus is the son of God. Oh, okay. I got it, got it. Thank you. <laughs> and she's Catholic? Really? Seriously? <laughs> No wonder Catholicism is in big trouble. <laughs> Anyone else? JC, comment. Hello, Master. Earlier, the Catholic young Catholic guy asked question. There's additional uh, information. So he says, uh, when he recite the mantras toward the Dantian, his teeth is uh, hardly uh, hardly closed with force, so he feels pressure. And when he tried to relax the mouth, he still feels the force and pressure uh, around the whole facial area, so he feels a little bit painful. So sometimes he has to open his eyes reciting the mantras. Then open the eyes. Oh, not, not open the eyes, sorry. Uh, open the mouth. Open the mouth? Open the mouth. Until you get tired. What's the big deal? We close our mouth because opening our mouth is tiring. <laughs> we still recite silently because uh, reciting loudly is, is too tiring for us. Okay? It, anything goes, don't worry about it. I don't understand the question. If you have pressure, then find a way to release it. What's the big deal? Where is the mouth guard? I don't care. It doesn't matter. Eventually, it's a temporary state. Eventually, you will outgrow it. You'll go beyond, you will transcend it. It's not that difficult. But learn to cope with it. Learn to endure it. Learn to, to make it work, that's all. Okay? Cultivation is I tell you to recite and you recite and what happened when I have a problem? Of course, when you recite you will have problems and you have to learn to, f to endure and eventually transcend it. That's all. Okay? If you have no problem, this is, this is the quote of the day. If you cultivate and you have no problems, you will not make progress. Period. The reason that our students progress so quickly is because they run into a lot of problems when they cultivate. And problems are opportunities where the bigger the problem, Okay, uh, the more chances you have to make progress. You can fix those problems, the progress comes naturally. All right, anything else? 92. His dazzling light fills the world. Glorious banner of unimpeded Dharma thus perceives. Okay, so light, the Buddha's light, the light it emits is dazzling. It's so bright. Okay, and it fills the entire world. Imagine the kind of wattage it has. That's hmm? incredible. You know, it, it's so casual as it feels the entire world when you look at from it from a perspective of, of uh, electrical power required. You know, uh, you can, you, 
you 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 uh, can charge the entire world, uh, all the EVs in the entire world. Just like that. It's so cool. Huh? And no network of EV uh, charging stations, superchargers needed. It's so cool, huh? And that's real technology, not the AI stuff. Don't buy, don't buy the AI stuff. AI has its, uh, its own forte, its strengths, but it certainly, it certainly cannot, cannot overtake the world because we're much smarter than those programmers who program the AI programs. Yes, sir. See, I, I agree with you, but I just, there's billions, there's so many people talking. Every time I tell my friends, like, man, like, AI is so overrated. They're just like. Yes, yeah. Let me tell you. Let's talk about this. See if you, it makes sense to you. A programmer who programs the AI program. Is it too much? Programmer, program, AI program. <laughs> Doesn't bother you. Uh, never mind. <laughs> he does one. He does. He can do wonderful things with his program. Yes, his program can do wonderful things. Granted. Okay. Many AI, AI programs are pretty impressive. What they're not speaking about. For your information, I submit to you that those programs conceived by the programmers can do wonderful things because of the programmer smarts. Yes? Engineering smarts. Marvelous thinking. Okay? In the same token, look at the flip side of it. Whatever he can conjure up, imagine, think of, is baked into his program. So far so good? What about the things that are his limitations? Them too, aren't they? Huh? Are those programmers as wise as Buddhas or sages? They're not. Okay? And therefore, the AI program can never, will never be able to replace you. Yes, two. Yeah, that's... No, no, two is not six. Look at your numbers. <laughs> Ladies first. Master, it seems like the work product that is created is a function of the, the creator's samadhi level. Yes. Your own limitations, okay? The, it's, it's a sales pitch. They keep on telling you how wonderful Jack GPT is and so forth. You look, and you look at the, the limitation of those programmers. I look at the at the I looked at the uh, the guy who 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 who, uh, who is the author of uh, Chat GPT or the guy, the young guy, right? Thirty in thirties, he's thirty. Look at him. And say, you have very limited West wisdom. I'm sorry. You may be very bright. But you have very limited wisdom. You only excel a little bit in a little bit uh, 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 small spot. That's it. You cannot solve the world's problems. Expecting the program to solve all the world's problems is sheer stupidity. Don't buy into the sales pitch. We know better. Okay? Anyone else? Okay. Let's go back. A uh, glorious banner. Hmm? Hmm. This guy here is very adorned. Banner. It's beautiful. Beauty. In here is very adorned. It's because this person here, why is he adorned? Xinjie, why is it annoying? Because, unlike you, he's rich. No? If you have so much money, would you drive around in Toyota? <laughs> Sorry, who drives Toyota? 
<laughs> okay, 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 control yourself. <laughs> Who can I <laughs> not offend here? What kind of make are we? <laughs> Toyota is what I drive, okay? <laughs> That's all I mean. <laughs> Not about you, it's about, you know. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so if you have so much money, okay, then to, for you, you know, buying a Lamborghini, no objection? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus, but that's a cheap car. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so, so, so you, those, those things are adorned. You see what I mean? They can afford those things. It's not, it's not like they try to impress you at all. It's beyond trying to impress. Because when you have you are so many blessings, you're so wealthy, you don't think about trying to impress anyone, right? I mean, because they wouldn't be able to appreciate it anyway. Agree? I was shocked when I heard that Rich people let their kids wear, like, you know, the, the three-year-old wearing a $3,000 uh, sweatshirt from Neiman Marcus. But, you know, I, 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 don't, I could not understand those things, Anna. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just uh, once poor, always poor. Uh, yes, uh, four. We have a question from the internet. It happens to be a friend of uh, Daniel Wisinski. Yes. And um, if you please, Master, he would like to know, uh, was, was Buddha only human, or was there something supernatural metaphysical to him? No, oh, Buddha is human. Uh, the, the beautiful thing about that story, uh, Daniel Winooski's friend, uh, is it, that the beautiful story is that Buddha was born as a man, I mean, as a boy. You don't born a man, right? For as far as I know. You're born as a boy, as a baby. And he grew up as a man. Or oh, woman, it is men nowadays. Okay. <laughs> and he's able to accomplish Buddhahood. The story he's meant to tell you, to illustrate that any of us can do it, not just Buddhas. All human beings can do it. That's what's so beautiful about it. But why do you why are you stuck on your is it supernatural or not? He said, look at that. It's a man who cultivated and do a lot of hardship and did something that's very difficult, achieved the biggest achievement possible in the human realm, becoming a Buddha. And then he says, turn around and says, you know. I think you too can do it. You too. Not just me. And that's the beautiful thing about it. It's not that he has spiritual power, he's like a like a like a like a weird phenomena, phenomenon that would never repeat. No, after that he taught so many of his disciples who became, you know, enlightened as well. Even one of them is a, a small dragon girl, you know, and who became enlightened too, became a Buddha as well. Hmm? You see, and that's Buddhism. We don't discriminate. It's equal opportunity. Yes, too. Thank, thank you, Master. So, like, for reference, um, Shakyamuni Buddha didn't need chat GPT to help him write his middle school paper, right? He still attained Buddhahood without the help of AI? Yeah, no need for AI. AI cannot help you become enlightened. 
guaranteed. Okay. Hmm. Glorious adorned banner. Uh, well, glorious. I don't know why you use glorious. I like to use adorned. Okay. Adorned banner. Again, adorned is that it's reserved for the wealthy, for the very, very blessed, super blessed, if you will. Okay. We talk about adorned is like, it's like sublime, if you will. Yes, in the back. Four. Thank you, Master. So on that commentary, um, he was discussing about dazzling light. So how, we, how do we receive, uh, perceive this dazzling light in the Saha world? Is it visible to us when you have a low samadhi level? Or is it, is it a, are we talking about ray of light? Or can you explain those dazzling lights? Well, it's true. It's a good question. Dazzling. When you hear the word dazzling, it's sort of blinding in a way. Huh? Dazzle. I'm dazzled. I mean, oh, I'm blinded by it. It's not the case. Dazzling is like it's so bright. This is so, it's a real good question. It's so bright. So if you look at it, will you, will you be dazzled? No, you still can see. But your mind is dazzled. Does it help? Like it? I just came up with the explanation. <laughs> it only dazzles your mind. The light is still, you know, it's still brighter than anything else, but it will not blind you. I never seen it, by the way. <laughs> yes, too. <laughs> thank, thank you, Master. Only, in, only to help, um, there's, there's a lower level mutant in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, her name is Dazzler. And her, uh, her mutant power is very benign. She's a pop star. Uh, but when she's on stage, she's able to have little like lights pop up behind her, and it dazzles the audience. So it's very pleasant and very uh, enhancing to her. Presence. Wow, I'd like to attend her concert. Okay, that's fascinating. Okay, uh, yes, uh, two. Now Jim wants to go too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Master. I was curious about a previous comment because I, I haven't read through all the Buddhist scriptures, but are there many examples of uh, beings who became Buddhas while they listened to Buddha's teachings that are mentioned? And many examples? Oh, examples throughout the world, throughout the universe. Oh, okay. It's no restrictions at all. No, I was just wondering if there were actual, was it ever written that there were disciples who became Buddha? Uh, yes, Buddha. It's everywhere. Oh. It's, it's... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's like like eating rice. Yeah, it's a common thing, commonplace thing. You know how many disciples he has? The Buddha's have countless, countless. All right, See, a typical engineer. Uh, are there are there data regarding this uh, this uh, this matter? <laughs> uh, can I access access have access to that uh, database? <sighs> so skeptical. Mm. Banner. Banner's way up there that everyone can see. Meaning that so many people see it, not just you, just his disciples. His, so many is, can be seen by so many people. So it's more or less like when we now doing the relics in Korea, and, uh, and of course the, the Koreans are asked, are they for real? How come you have so many? Our temple has a dozen. You have like 300,000 dozen? <laughs> okay. Am I right? Is it, am I off? I'm a little bit off. I feel a few hundred thousand dollars. I feel a hundred thousand off. Uh, but so they say, are they for real? And, and, and we chuckle. I say, hey, people asked us that 10 years ago in the United States. You Koreans are so backward. <laughs> but my sangha in Korea don't know how to answer such questions. Oh, I don't know. 
just laugh at them and say, hey, people ask this in, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, roast meat already 10 years ago. CBS, you know, all the news network came and asked the same question. Yeah? AP, same thing. Yeah? Associated Press and so forth. You see, so, so it becomes a fact after 10 years, no one question it anymore. The same thing, the banner is that it's recognized by the whole world. They say, wow, that's him. That's a relics. That's, that's the, that's this, this bodhisattva by the name of, of, uh, of uh, unobstructed dharma. Adorned banner of unobstructed dharma. That's him. And people recognize it. You know, why is that? Because if you are a fake and you dare rise, raise a banner, it says, I am adorned banner of unimpeded dharmas. You know what's going to happen? I'm <laughs> being all the competitors who come and chop it down. Agree or disagree? Very much like Elon, all his competitors are chopping him down at the knees right now. You are phony, you are scam, there's no such a thing as full, full autonomous driving. Waymo is doing that, Mercedes is doing that, <laughs> BMW and so forth. Everyone is, is chopping his knees right now. The guy's in trouble. Sell his stocks. <laughs> okay? It's in, that's not possible. So that's why you dare raise a banner and say, I am fully autonomous driving. Guess what's going to happen? Everyone will come and chop you and, and attack you. And yet, after all this time, he still has this adorned banner. I rest my case. It's for real. What is real about him? That he comprehends unobstructed dharma. That meaning that the dharma can save any living being. No one can stop it. Only living beings stop themselves. Not the ghosts, not the demons. None of them can stop it. Only you, recipients, stop yourself. I want you to think about it. You stop yourself. I see you, oh, it's so difficult. Oh, I don't know. He says it's very difficult. I don't know. I don't know about this. You see, you stop yourself as soon as you hear something that you don't understand. But the Dharma itself is unstoppable. Isn't that cool? The truth cannot be stopped. You can slander it. You can do whatever you want it. You cannot stop the truth from being known. The truth about you. You are Buddha to be. What are the truths that you want? Hmm? That's all I want to know. I will become a Buddha. There's nothing you can do about it. It's cool. Hmm? Anyone? Okay. Hmm. So. The Dharma, our Dharma cannot be obstructed. Okay. I'm trying to look ahead and see how much more time I, I need I, I need I have. Doubts. Doubts. I'm collecting him. 
Gone and gone. Okay, okay, okay. I will not. I will not kill myself. I will not compete with myself. Any questions? I wanted to say something else, but I say, oh, it's coming later. Any questions? Next, ninety-four. Throughout boundless seas of great eons, the Buddha sought Bodhi in order to help living, help sentient beings. Okay, this is how big his heart is. His this desire of his to save living beings. He harbors it for three asamkiyayas kalpas, meaning his countless times. Meaning what? That countless lifetimes, every single lifetime. Okay? Uh, he's, what is, what he cherished most is to save living beings. So, for example, Master Shehua disciples, Wu Jin, right there, back there. Are you still awake? You, you seem, she seems to have lost some weight. How much weight, how, much, how many pounds have you lost recently? Did you lose weight? She lost eight pounds. Lose 20 more pounds. See, the girls are chuckling. <laughs> okay? Uh, that woman there, you talk to her. The one thing is very clear to her. She's so determined to do what? What are you determined to do, woman? I mean, lady. She's not going to tell you. It's a family secret. The only thing that's most important to her besides making money, so far so good? Huh? Yeah. First, number one, making money. Number two, what's the number two? What? What's number two? Cindy, what did you say? What's number two for her? What's number two? Come on, speak it up. Spit it out. Be straightforward. <laughs> she says, she says, I only wish my two boys would leave the home line. I say, yeah, fat chance. <laughs> <laughs> they chase after girls. Uh, her number two wish is to save her family. Yes or no? That's what you child people do. They take care of the families. You know, you touch a family, they kill you. Yes or no? She wants, she only hangs around here because she said, I want to send my family to the Pure Land. That's the only reason, true or not. Okay. So, see, all the 10 plus years I've known her, she's been coming to the temple, that's the only thing when, every time I look at her is that what she wants, say, I want you to save my family, bring them to the pillar. Yes or no? Hmm? See, that wish there is undying for her as, as, as far as I know. Imagine the Buddha here. He says, so now imagine that in the future, next lifetime, now she wants to save not only the family, but also the neighbors. Why? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so forth. You see, it, it keeps on growing and growing and growing. Can you imagine? This is how Buddhas function. First, you save your family and then your neighbors, and then your colleagues. Can you see that? 
So for three asam kiyas, whatever it is, okay, it's like forever. He, he, she, if you ask her next lifetime, what happened in the next lifetime, she will mean her current family members may not still, may not be her family members anymore, but she still wants to save them. You got my point? So that's how Buddhists function. They keep on expanding, expanding, expanding. They will never forget. Once they said, I'm going to save my two sons, okay? Then in future, she should pursue them to make sure they're saved. Right or wrong? See? Only I understand, and Master Shinhua doesn't. <laughs> so that's that's that that's why he says I want to save these beings and that's why I want to have the wisdom to know how to save them. They're very practical. Eh? Saving is just a desire, but they say in order to save them I need to know how to do it. Okay? Uh, next ninety six. With many different spiritual powers, he transforms all. The God, brilliant renown, awakens this Dharma. Okay, 97. In reference to the prior question from the internet, is Buddha some sort of spiritual, special, spiritual being? Yes, is the answer. He's capable of those things as well. And that's what Buddhists do. Uh, I like this God here. This God, brilliant renown, uh, is Ming Cheng Wang Ting. Okay, so he, he, he's very well known, meaning that many people have certified that he's for real. That's why he's well known. Well known here not only refers to us, but also his peers or his superiors. Does it make sense? Huh? Uh, so yes, internet, they still have some people who badmouth him, you know. He's a uh, really now, actually, uh, it's a fake. He's a scam. He's a scammer, and so forth. Okay? It has some of that. But most of the people in the know, like bodhisattvas, like mahasattvas, like patriarchs, like Buddhists, they say, yeah, it's for real. And, and, and all the little noise about these losers, they say, oh, he's a scammer, he's a scammer, he's a scammer. Don't matter. You don't pay attention, you know, like little noise. You got that a little noise? <laughs> on, the, on the video tape, on the audio tape, a little bit of that, okay? But the music. And loud and clear. Yes? That's really me now. That's him. Buddhas, Mahasattvas, recognize him. It's renowned among them. Okay? And, and not only he's now, he's now known to them, to the, the superior being, but also they certify that he can see, he can have tremendous spiritual powers. All right? Now, so the next section is about uh, more of these beings, with what they, uh, oh, their specialties and their achievements. It's 99. Moreover, celestial king, bright banner of delight in the Dharma, Gain a passage into liberation or comprehensively observing the faculties of all sentient beings so as to speak Dharma for them and dissolve their doubts. 父次, 可爱, 要法, 光明, 床天王, 德普观, 一切众生根, 为说法, 断疑, okay, one hundred. Ah, beautiful number. Uh, this is a celestial king, and this is a section here. It talks about the uh, the uh, the in the form realm and the top heaven there, and then those world rulers, actually a mahasattvas, 
Mm. Quite a few of them are sattvas. Uh, his name here is Celestial King, Heavenly King, Bright Banner of Delight in the Dharma. Okay? Uh, so, um, he, uh, he loves the Dharma. Some of you love shopping. I do. Who doesn't like shopping? No, I like shopping. You don't like shopping? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> okay, that's the way. Uh, I was talking to some people at lunch, and we were talking about attachments, and I was saying I'm attached to money, and uh, and the uh, the um, discussion was, well, maybe it's okay to be attached to money, and I said, well, you know, I uh, I just it causes me emotional pain to be attached to money, and that's my real problem is is the uh, a- attachment to it. Is it, it so? Um, the, I have a question about attachments. Is it okay to have attachments, or should I really just try to, you know, cut off all attachments in general? Like having money, but not being attached to it, if that makes sense. Okay, before I answer that, is it possible to have money and not be attached to it? I certainly think that's possible. You think it's possible? I do, yeah. Anyone thinks that you can have money and not be attached to money? Is it possible? Seriously? Two. Thank you, Master. Haven't you seen when rappers go in the club and they just take a big roll of bills and just throw it? Like, whoo! Okay. Yeah, they're not attached. They got so much money, they're not attached. I never seen it. Sorry, I can't relate to that. Yeah, but, two. Yeah, but if you asked him to throw all their money out to the audience, it's a story. <laughs> one roll, and he's so impressed already. <laughs> That's all he's saying. We weren't saying attached to all money. We were just saying attached to money. You can be unattached to some money. No, what is implied here is all money. Well, we talked two weeks ago, Master, about how there's no cheating. Like- Come on, no cheating. <laughs> There's like an amount of money you should not be like $5. Should you be attached to $5 or $10 or $100? Where's your threshold? I you, say five. <laughs> Is it me personally? <laughs> okay. It's individual, sorry, right? Sorry, it's sorry, sorry. Targeted. So, like, you know, oh, uh, you know, a dollar. Can I, am I attached to this dollar? Can this okay, dollar- let's talk about him. This guy's so argumentative today. <laughs> If you attach to five dollars, something that you all understand, five dollars, agree? Anyone can understand five dollars. If you say, I'm not attached money as long as below five dollars, does that mean that, is it true that you're not attached to money as long as not over five dollars? You call that non-attachment? Well, I, I think a good example... I know you're laughing at me, but now you look at how, how ridiculous you sound. I, I've painted myself into a corner. I recognize that. But, <laughs> okay, okay. He's past that. I say, okay, let's forget it. No, no, no. no. But to, to maintain my, you know, red team Dignity, argumentation. yes. Yeah. Okay. So my wife, who does not like shopping, for instance... Now we change subject, or yeah. are we still on the, t- if the topic of money? If my wife spends $5, I'm not attached. I don't, it doesn't bother me. Mm. <laughs> and this is, this is a weird couple. Uh, yeah, uh, she, he sends indirect, they send to each other indirect messaging <laughs> through us. <laughs> uh, he says, honey, don't spend too much, no more than five bucks. <laughs> and she says, uh, you should be more tidy. <laughs> <laughs> help clean around the house more often <laughs> and so forth. It's so funny how you look at how they interact with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, go for us. Americans are weird, let me tell you. Yes. Look at how Jumi and her husband, how happy they are. Yeah, thưa thầy, uh, con không có attach your money because uh, 
I give more, my money to my husband. <laughs> no wonder he loves you. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Okay, so the point is, 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 uh, is uh, uh, how do we get into attachment to money again? Okay, okay. Did we finish your point? You did. Yeah. Um, so is it okay to have an attachment and not be attached? Well, I have a body. Master Shen Hua had a body. Master Yang Hua has a body. But does that mean that they're attached to the body? Now we go to the body now. Well, money attachment is, it, wouldn't that be considered the body attachment? Okay, one thing at a time, okay? You cannot have more than two. Well, it's the same. It's under the same attachment, wouldn't it be? Because there's five different attachments? Body has many parts. Okay. It's okay. hair. Yes. So I, I think it's certainly possible to have money and not be attached to it. I, I've felt that it's sometimes, and it's just so much better. It's so much better. So how do I... How, how do I um, Keep that feeling going of ha being able to have money but not be attached not to attached it. attached to it. Yeah. I have got yet to figure it out. Someone helps me out. How do you ha can you have something and not be attached to it? Okay. Can I, instead of money, can I have something more personal? Like, can I have a wife and not be attached to my wife? I, I think the concept would apply to every, everything in your life. This, this, this is, I have to see who's going to buy it. I'm watching all the married men. Okay, a brave soul. Well, if you have many wives. <laughs> a and daring soul. Yeah. And you lose one. <laughs> I don't like that. Oh, no, no. The wife has a retort. <laughs> oh, good Lord. I will not touch that with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> yes, too. I have, an, I have an example, Master. Yeah. Uh, my oh, wife, who doesn't like shopping, will go to the store and she says, don't walk next to me, I don't want to be around you. And so I have to hover around the store, but then when she gets to the cash register, she realizes she didn't bring her money. But I always bring the money, so now she's attached to me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're getting real, too, real deep, too deep now. <laughs> Oh, God. And let's keep it at the informal, impersonal. <laughs> I don't want to lose either of you. <laughs> or parts of either of you. <laughs> okay, where are we now? Do Korea, Koreans are, have no attachments? You see, they say, oh, I have no such problems. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Bright Banner, okay, uh, again, Banner is well known, you know, it's recognized, so it's the fact, okay. He delight in the Dharma. Uh, it's a form of joy that, 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 that they take delight in the Dharma. It's quite commonplace with the people who cultivate. Those people who cultivate because they delight in the Dharma, okay? And he attained liberation by observing all the faculties of living being to speak Dharma for them, dissolve the doubts, okay? Mm. So, ah, so, so he, mm, he, he can look at all our capacities. And then he can, he can see how to speak Dharma. He knows how to speak to you in order to resolve your doubts. 
That's what he specializes in doing. So far, so good? Okay, we lost a Colombian. <laughs> okay, um, and, and, I, and, I, and my question is why? Why does he only specialize in resolving doubts? Anyone? Why doubts? What's the big deal? Go first. A master, I remember we talk about this in the Six Patriarch Sutra that doubt is the biggest saying that pre prevents us from seeing our self nature. Yeah, yeah, about achieving the, the things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I want you to understand this. How shall I put it? Okay. He said, look at the... Con it's kind of fascinating to me what, what, what it really means. You, it, you, you guys miss it, but to me it's fascinating. He says, what he's saying from this, all this long sentence here, okay, it means that each and every one of you are at a level, samadhi level. So far, so good? So he looks at you and says, ah, that's where you are. Yeah, you. Yeah, right there. Okay. This is what you are. At that level of yours, you have one doubt, one type of doubt. Isn't that cool? That's wisdom. In general, you talk in generalities, what, what kind of doubt you have? Uh, from a dictionary, what kind of doubt? You doubt yourself. Hmm? You doubt yourself that you're stupid, that you are too dense, and, uh, uh, and you are not worthy, and you can't cultivate. You're not good enough to cultivate. Sounds familiar? Anyone? Who is awake, who's awake? Yeah? You're not good enough. You don't have what it takes to cultivate. Not, not, uh, not clearly, not, uh, not banned. Okay? You see? You feel that you, you are not good enough. That's one doubt. Okay? One type of doubt. Second type of doubt is you doubt the teacher. That he says that the teacher eh, doesn't look like a teacher. Doesn't sound like a teacher. Doesn't walk like a teacher. You notice that today, I was, as we're doing on the Dharma request, you weren't paying attention, but I paid attention. Wait, what happened? I noticed the Dharma, the person who requested the Dharma is different. So that's why I kept on looking, what is different today? Okay? And I realized he's different because he walks like Xin Xin nowadays. You know how Xin Xin walks? Straight. <clears throat> and for the first time I said, was it Xin Xin or Xin Jie? I said, oh, it's Xin Jie. But who walks like Xin Xin? They must be copyrighted. <laughs> this is plagiarism. So, among a nun, we have a certain comportment. Okay, so the known monks, you ask the Vietnamese there, they're all Vietnamese monks and the uh, uh, Theravadamans, the Sunim and so forth. I went to Korea, I met so many Sunims now, except for one that someone showed, showed me recently. They walk around so adorned, like Xin Xin and Xin Jie. So adorned and so magnanimous. How are you today? Uh, this gentle smile, 
Not like me. Smile like this, if you're trying to get some money. But they just smile a little. <laughs> you know what I mean? Clearly knows. I mean, she's seen so many Sunims, you know. Booze. Am I, you agree with me or not? The Korean Sunims, I've met so many high level Korean Sunim, okay, except for one who's not like that. All of them are like, all of them are like, you know, they, 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 there's a certain format, a certain appearance. You must appear magnanimous, detached from the worldly things. You know? Uh, and and, uh, and uh, so, so that's why, that's why, that's why when you're not like that, the disciples, because they've seen so many of the monks and nuns like that, you're not like that, say, are you really a monk? <laughs> so I, I remember there's some, some Chinese guy who came to go for us during the pandemic. So he, he, we asked him, why, why are you here? He said, I usually don't come here. There's a small temple, but my temple I go to uh, is closed. It's a Chinese temple, so I have nowhere else to go. <laughs> He's very blunt about it. Uh, and says, okay, so what do you like about this? He said, I don't like anything. Your master speaks like a comedian. <laughs> Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> and guess what? Two weeks later, I told my people, I said, tell them not to come to the temple anymore. <laughs> Go to a comedy club. <laughs> it's more entertaining. <laughs> so anyway, so, so that, that's how, that's how, oh, that's how a lot of monks and nuns behave. And that's why you don't follow that mold. People have doubts. You know, cool. That's why teachers, students have doubts about the teacher because there's certain things that are not out of the norm. Number three doubt, type of doubt, is that you doubt that the Dharma can do it. And you know what? If you doubt yourself, you doubt the teacher, you doubt the Dharma, it's the worst thing that could happen to you because you have any of such doubts, Clark, you will not enter samadhi. You cannot enter samadhi. Doubt is very dangerous because just when you're about to enter samadhi, the thought of doubt arises and you cannot enter samadhi. That's how dangerous and that, that kind of danger is very subtle. And that's why this Mahasattva, this, this celestial king, bright banner, the light in the Dharma, he says, well, I want to help them resolve those doubts. You see the kind of wisdom these people have, what it takes for you to attain liberation. They know the intricacies of the process in great details. That's wisdom. All right? So he speaks Dharma designed to dissolve the doubts. Okay? Uh, questions? Celestial king, ocean of pure adornments, gain a passage into liberation of enabling all sense and beings to see the Buddha upon recollecting him. 靜莊嚴海天王得隨意念令見佛解脫門 Okay, so in uh, the other one is doubt. This one is different. In what way? He, supreme wisdom light, so he's very bright light of wisdom, and he became enlightened, okay, uh, uh, by... Uh, by, uh, oh, no, not this one, next one. Uh, uh, he became enlightened by helping all living beings, including us, 
okay, to see the Buddha upon recollecting him. Why? Yes, Colombia. Bogota. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Uh, the, the last one was uh, removing the doubt, and this one, inspire faith. Very good. Uh -huh. Colombians have faith. Okay, excellent. Okay, so just the opposite end of it. You have no doubt, then you should have more faith. Oh, this, the other side is reduce doubts. This one is increasing faith. I want to ask you why either, because I'm tired of, of asking myself questions. <laughs> okay? Uh, but I want to stress this point here, besides, besides uh, I, and we're not going to talk about why, okay? Not today. Maybe in the future. If we explain this a second time, <laughs> uh, each time we, we increase the depth. Okay, so what he does is kind of interesting. He says, when you recite the Buddha's name, I will use my spiritual powers, okay, to help you have a vision of the Buddha. So, so many people who recited the Buddha's name and so forth, who came to me and said, oh, I saw one in Bodhisattva, I saw Master Shenhua, I saw, I saw the Buddha, I saw so and so and so. Uh, some of them probably received help from this guy. And I know some of my, my, my students who showed me at Lu Mountain, they said, I saw one in Bodhisattva flying, so beautiful. So sublime, okay? She's probably got help from this, this uh, Mahasattva, okay? And because of that, you know, that particular disciple of mine doesn't speak much, doesn't talk to, to people at all, but she always comes to the temple regardless. No one can discourage her. And, and it's because of those visions that she had. You can't touch her. It's not about me. Because <laughs> you went to the temple, because those beautiful visions of a little mountain temple. And then she came here and said, oh, wow, visions. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Cool. Thank you, Master. Um, what what I what I feel like we're describing here is uh, is responses, and I know when I've experienced responses, it instills faith in me and it, it removes doubt. Yeah. Is that is that effectively yeah. what? Um, apologies. The celestial king from the previous slide uh, is is doing. Is he providing responses? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, next, 103. Celestial King Supreme Wisdom Light. Wait, 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 okay. Gain a passage into liberation of the body, being adorned with the Dharma nature of equality and independence. Okay, okay, folks, can we be honest about this? The reason I go through, I, went, I'm, I decided to go through a lot of slides today because I'm catching up so that I'm gone for a few weeks and you say, hey, Mass have been gone too long. I would tell you, hey, I may have been gone too long, but listen, if I go uh, one slide per week, then uh, I've been doing more. <laughs> I should be longer, be gone longer. Never mind. You don't think it's funny. <laughs> so how insincere. Uh, okay, so this guy here hmm, specializes in the Dharma nature of equality and independence. What's equality? Hmm. 
What's equality? Yes, university cross. Uh, I think that means not being attached. Equality is not being attached? Yeah. Because if you're attached, you're saying one thing is more important than another, but if you're not attached, everything is kind of equal. How can, how can you be equal to your neighbor? Because you said you're not attached. Well, uh, that, that would just be an idea, which would be an attachment. Are you different or the same as your neighbor? Oh, well, both. Huh? Well, we're both. You cannot speak from, with, from both sides of the mouth at the same time. Are you equal? Are you the same or are you different? I can't answer that question. I'm sorry. Okay. Anyone would like to answer the question, how can you be, how can things be equal? Yes, too. Thank Man you. equals woman. Who, who could argue? Rich that? equals poor. That to me, that's not possible. I think uh, an example of equality is everyone will achieve Buddhahood. It's too far. Talk by now. Yes, Bogota. Thank you, Master. That's the only city I know. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it's the one that I'm from, so that's okay. You from where? Bogota. Bo uh, Bogota. Bogota. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Um, I think that equality is a characteristic of the Dharma nature, that we all have the Buddha nature. It's before that. Okay, that's a good point. How can things be equal? You, Buddhist scholars, how can things be equal? You, people in the know, who study the Dharma for so, so long, how can things be equal? Two. They're all empty. They're all empty. That's the only way. I will refer patience to you. Yes. Hope for your patience. Oh. Okay, why do I say that? Because if you are depressed, anyone depressed? <laughs> okay? If you have depression, and I'm saying this for you, for your sake, you have depression. The people who are depressed, the mistake they make is that, go away, I don't want to feel bad. Yes or no? I know you all, how you all feel. Yeah, why do you feel bad? Go away. I don't want to feel bad. Yes? Rejection. Yes? So, what's the antidote? Mary Jo says, take this pill, Prozac. <laughs> no, no, not me, not me. Okay, Bosco. Never mind, Bosco. <laughs> He's not here, so it's safe. Okay. <laughs> Mary Jo, so Adam, no, 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 I don't do it for you. It's very bad. What, what do you do nowadays? What kind of drugs do you use? I, I don't prescribe drugs. You don't prescribe I do drugs? Therapy only. Even if they are no, I, I'm not qualified. on the verge of killing themselves no, I, every day? No, I'm not day? qualified to. That's not my profession. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. Forget it. Bosco will pr pr prescribe Prozac. <laughs> 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 okay? So... So, so we reject, we reject feeling bad, the bad feelings. Yes, that's what we all do. That's why you're here, by the way. <laughs> you say, I don't want to be home because I feel bad at home. So I go to the temple, I feel better. <laughs> Sound familiar? Don't raise your hand. 
<laughs> okay, I know, I know, that's why you come to the temple. We only have sick people, okay, uh, here in the U.S. Yeah. Okay, now, you don't understand that they keep on coming at you because of your rejecting the bad feeling. Yes? I have, I'm going somewhere, please bear with me. Don't, 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 don't fall asleep. Don't walk out of here. Okay, I'm almost done. Okay? So you have to realize that your depression keeps on coming at you because of your rejection, your fear of feeling bad. Is it clear? So if you are not afraid of feeling bad, what is the alternative? How can you not be afraid? You say, feeling bad, feeling good, same thing. You reject feeling bad, and you seek good feelings. Yes? So instead of that, consider, will you consider said, that feeling bad, feeling good? Eh, it's the same. There's no need to reject them. No need to seek good feelings. No need to reject bad feelings. That's wisdom. So far, so good. Okay? How do you do that? Because bad feelings, good feelings are the same. They're not different. That's the only way for you to reject it. Not to reject it. Not to fall into that trap. Is it too convoluted for you? <laughs> I'm going somewhere. If you have depression, okay, I just want, number one, want to remind you that you're depressed because of that attachment to good feelings and that rejection of bad feelings. Be, beware of that, number one. Number two, okay, the real antidote the only antidote for that, the real antidote for that is empty yourself. When you empty, good feelings, bad feelings, all the same. It would be wrong for you to mentally teach your patients or teach people that said, you know, tell yourself, Good feelings, bad feelings are the same. That's called self-delusion. This is what people, professionals do. They, 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 they give you an argument and give you these, these mental constructs and to fool yourself. In Buddhism, we don't do that. In Buddhism, we teach you how to empty yourself so that whenever you are depressed, what do you do? You cross your legs and empty yourself. What depression? I'm empty. Who's depressed? I'm not depressed. I'm not happy either. <laughs> but at least I'm not depressed. Yeah. Six. So uh, Celestial King talks about equality and independence. So is that independence where you're independent of good and bad feelings? Or how Six Patriarch says good and evil? No, no, that's uh, independent is something else. I don't, I don't have enough time. Can I finish it today? I don't want to come back in, uh, in a few weeks and continue this. It would be annoying. I would not remember Okay, so we understand uh, depend, equality is that it has to be empty, okay? So that's why when you depress, you're not depressed, you're still equal. Why? Emptying yourself. So you, if you practice Chan, eventually you learn to empty yourself. And that's the level of fourth stage Aha. You can empty yourself. Hint, hint. You feel depressed? Empty yourself. 
third stage aha, you're able to begin to shield yourself a lot from repression already. Fourth stage, poof, you disappear. Okay? Independence. Independence here is not independent. It's about Wu So Yi. Okay? I have a few minutes. I need to wrap it up. Okay? What is no dependency? You don't, you don't rely on anything or anyone. How do you not rely on anything or anyone? How? Yes, six. Uh, I think that's when you found your Buddha nature and you, uh, you, you're, you're dependent on that and you're not dependent on your attach. You have no attachments. Oh, boy, you have so many dependencies. Anyone else? Yes, too. Thank you, Master. I, I believe the beginning of that is when you learn how to start charging your own battery. Charging your own batteries. Sound like some kind of dependency there. He has, still has to charge his own batteries. That's a dependency. Anyone else? Give an example of what, what you don't depend on. Nine. Thank you, Master. Um, because you don't need protection from anybody? You need protection. What do you do with the, with the, with the, the police? Uh, go for us. When you're empty, you're not dependent on anything. It's unconditioned. Emptiness is unconditioned. Emptiness, and you don't depend on anything? Don't you depend on emptiness? It's not, uh, it's not, depends on, uh, it's not depending on uh, the um, arising of condition. So advanced. Okay, anyone else? How do you depend, not depend on anything? Time is up. Come on, quickly, quickly. Yes, nine, four. Master, I think no attachments. No attachments. Very good. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? You see that? See, you, you guys have so much wisdom. I'm so impressed. Go for it. You see, people who read all these words, uh, uh, self-mastery, uh, uh, adornment, uh, equality, and so forth, they have no clues on how, what it really means. Okay? And that's what, what's the fallacy of all these people who, who read a lot, who really don't understand the true dharma behind it. Yes, too. Uh, it sounds so equality if, with emptiness sounds like at the level of four stage arhat is independence at the beginning of uh, first ground bodhisattva. Mm, no, uh, go for it. Hello, master. Um, so uh, you can try to drop your thoughts. Drop what? Your thoughts. Drop your wife? <laughs> <laughs> drop your th Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> she can drop her wife. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, we're not going there. Um, we, uh, how do you have no p dependency? Very simple. Where have you been? Hey, how do you become independent, huh? Xian Tong? Yeah. Nam Di Xiu. See? Ready made answer. From a shelf. Don't attach anything. What, what do you have to ask? Wu so is you don't depend on anything. Yes, six. Last, last answer. Yes. If you finish performing your duties and then you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to depend on anything else. 
Yeah, but what about your wife needs you to do something, or your girlfriend needs you to do something, your mother needs you to do something. Or you finish your duties, like you, re- you know, you finish. What about your non-duties? The non-duties? Yeah, like a woman's duties. Oh, like, like someone else's duties. duties? Then it's compassion. Oh, compassion. So you still need compassion. That's my answer. In order to have nothing to depend on, you have no needs. No? Is not Buddhist enough? <laughs> if you don't need anything, then you don't depend on anything. You don't need clothes. I mean, <laughs> you know, the, the few things you need, the more independent you become. Yes, five. Then you become boring for those who live around you. <laughs> she says, when I don't need anything, my husband worries about me. He says, you becoming too Buddhist, are you going to leave me? <laughs> I'm talking about your independence, not your husband's. You can be independent, but your husband doesn't have to. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.